Okay, DEFCON 24, wireless capture the flag. This is our 13th DEFCON that we've been running wireless, uh, starting back in DEFCON 11 when the wireless war drive started. Um, guy named Pete Shipley. Yeah, wearing a Shmukon shirt. <laughs> I do hack charities, it's fun. Um, <laughs> sorry. Love you, Heidi. <laughs> Bow to my firewall. Those that get it, get it. Those that don't, it's funny. Um, so anyway, so they started a wireless war drive after Pete Chipley's talk on NetStumbler about 10, 11, 12, 13 years ago. Chris Hurley, guy goes by Romer, started it as an actual contest in Las Vegas. It covered all of Las Vegas. It was really, really kick-ass. Those that were there, wow. If you ever see Draghorn, the guy that wrote Kismet, thank him for writing NetStumbler. <laughs> Hashtag bad DEF CON advice. He will kill you. Um, so that being Literally. said, this is the next iteration of the wireless capture the flag. These are all brand new challenges. So those who have played before, sorry, this is all different now. Those that don't have knowledge, you're going to learn a lot. We want people to play that have never played before because we do this to teach people. That's the main reason we're even here at DEF CON at all is to teach people. We're at DEF CON, we're at SHMUCON, we're at 13 or 14 B-sides a year. Uh, Derby. All right, whatever. Uh, yeah. We're all over we, the are, we do about 20 conferences a year doing this type of contest and teaching so that people can get a feel for what wireless looks like. Anybody heard of IoT? You know what IoT is? Internet of shit. It's wireless. <laughs> it's wireless. Welcome to wireless rebranded. People forgot about wireless security for about 10 years. It was really ugly. We never stopped because we enjoyed it. We had fun with it. Now, all of a sudden, Josh and General's in the room. Everybody say hi. Walking in front of the camera like a dick. Wow. <laughs> he always has an antenna on a Jack Daniels bottle. It's always a lot of fun. What's really fun is as he's losing during the capture of the flag, the Jack Daniels goes down, the antenna goes up. It's weird. Um, Usually whiskey dick works the <laughs> other way. <laughs> so this is our iteration this year. Um, I have to do this one first. Sorry, but feel free. We are not lawyers. Consult a lawyer if you have any questions about anything in the RF spectrum. There are people here that are no longer here after doing wireless shit already this year. And by not here, they're standing behind these poles. It's weird. They get really well fed, though, so that's good. Um, if you have any questions, FCC.gov is a great site for anything RF. If you're trying to broadcast, go next door and get your ham radio license and then come back. Uh, do not frequency jam. Broad spectrum jamming is illegal everywhere. There is nothing good about it. And sadly, you're typically jamming yourself unless you're really, really good at what you do, and it's still physics and you're jamming yourself. So do yourself a favor. Don't DDoS the air. That gets picked up really fast by those black helicopters that you keep seeing leaving the airport. They're not really and black. Us. They're red, I think. And, and us. us. We're monitoring for all this as well because we want to keep you guys out of trouble. That's our goal is to give you a place to play, beat the crap out of RF, wireless, Zigbee, SCADA. God, I can't even name all the all right, things that yeah. we're running. So, so that no. being said, <laughs> if it feels wrong, it probably is. We authorize you right. to attack our networks, and we'll give you what those networks are in a minute. This is a secure network. So by playing and attaching to the network, you can send to whatever happens. Play for fun, but play at your own risk. The stuff that you guys can do to us, we've probably already thought of, and we can do it back, but we can do it really well and knock you down. We've also got equipment that will knock down half this hotel. So that being said, have fun, but play good. Now on to the fun. Those that don't know what a capture the flag is, this is a wireless capture the flag. Unlike the big capture the flag downstairs, we're not asking you to solve puzzles. This isn't a whole lot of weird kind of crypto-ish deep level stuff, and we're not asking you to hack the Gibson. What we are giving you is real life, real normal things that you're going to run into as you're working, doing stuff, learning about things, but in a legal place to do it. And it gives you the opportunity to be able to You've work with each other. All right. It'll give you the opportunity to work with each other to learn in a very good way. So like if you get stuck on a particular thing at home or anything like that, this is the place to be able to find someone and go, hey, how the hell do I do this? Because we all happen to be here. So. Deauthenticating packets is not jamming, first and foremost. It is a necessary capability in doing wireless work, Wi-Fi work specifically. But 
Sucks. When there's a, when there's a whole bunch of you doing it, you get a lot better results than when one of you is doing it. So you're going to get good results off the capture of the flag just by sitting here and just sniffing the air for a while. First hint. This can be done with about forty dollars worth of equipment. It can also be done with four thousand to ten thousand dollars worth of equipment. But ultimately, we make everything so that you can do it with forty dollars worth of equipment. You might not be as fast. You might not be you know blazing speed, but you can still compete in about. 90 percent yeah ish uh, we've got a couple things that do require some equipment because hey this is defcon um there are clues everywhere we talk about them on a regular basis pay attention to us wctf desk over there at wctf underscore us is all throughout this this briefing that's our twitter handle we're blasting stuff out on a regular basis schedules talks capture the flag information when the foxes are leaving when the hide and seeks are starting um and some other stuff if you have a question asked, we'll determine if we want to answer it. Early in the conference, we typically will help people that we know probably aren't going to be competing to win. Try and social engineer us, feel free. Later in the contest, as certain people start having the same questions over and over again, that's when we start actually helping because it's going to help the group as opposed to helping like an individual team that's playing. Um, to score, you submit flags. The flags are in transmissions. They're decoupling video. They're demodulating signals. They're breaking crypto of the wireless itself. So WPA, WEP, um, Zigbee, I, yeah, a whole lot of stuff. You'll find There's out. <laughs> There's um, and then once you capture the flag, submit it right away. Um, some of the challenges are timed, so the points go down as, you, as you're working through it. Um, scoreboard will be up as soon as we start, and it'll be up throughout the duration of the contest. So you'll see how you're doing and what flags are taken. What? Get it up. I know. Uh, what is CTF? So resources, SDR.ninja. Sorry. <laughs> Russ is one of the gods of this stuff. He does a lot of research. He puts a lot of stuff up, and he also stands on the shoulder of gods. I took that from your talk. Um, to giants. get giants, gods, whatever. Yeah. Um, guys like Mike Osman, guys like Balan, Saber, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. These guys have been building this stuff, starting this stuff, working with groups like Addis back in the corner. Hey, guys. <laughs> um, to get you guys the best information we possibly can. WCTF.us is where we have all of our resources for the capture the flag for the wireless village, the schedule, the scoreboard, uh, references, all of our past in briefs where it's given gear advice, uh, what you should bring, how you should do it, how to, how to capture the flag. The SIG ID wiki, which is the first time I've ever done that right in a talk, is also a really good place to start. If you see a signal in a software-defined radio and you don't know what it is, somebody's probably seen that signal before and has posted it, and you can actually look at the signal, you can look at the FFT, and see what it's supposed to look like, and you can compare it to what you found. Um, gear, so this talk right here, um, I think we have a laser. Yay, look at that. WCTF Docs, B-Sides, DC, 2015 in brief, has our full gear. Here's what you should have. Here's what you should bring. How to CTF. So wireless capture the flag. This year, we have officially over 100 flags for challenges this year. It's the most we've ever done. We're doing that because we've had a lot of requests for a lot of things, and we've tried to incorporate as much that we could legally. We also have 25 additional flags that are available for different acts of hackery. If you guys do something really cool in the room and you can prove it to us, or we see the results of it on someone else's system in the air, we're going to give you points just because you did something really, really cool. Or the we, opposite. Or, yes. <laughs> or negative points if you do something super douchey. If you do something super douchey, we're going to use discretionary points to knock you down. Um, and the challenges range from 72 megahertz to 5.8 gigahertz. So the challenges. So these are the coins over the years. Um, we do coins every year. The winner of the contest will actually get the 2017, 2016 coin. Um, we do three for first place, three for second, three for third. So if you play, you get a coin. They're, these are challenge coins. They're the first copper challenge coin we've ever seen. So we said, hell, what the hell, let's make one. Um, and we have a Star Wars theme this year, hence the, imper the modified imperial symbol and our village. <laughs> so budget your time. Challenges don't have to be solved in order. If you find something in the air, pick it up and take it. Blah. <laughs> Difficulty ranges literally from easy to insane. Easy is something that your computer will do for you. If you just monitor the air, your computer with the right tool will just take care of it for you. Easy points. Up to insane where you need to find something that's inside of Russ's head that's broadcasting off of a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Pay attention to details. If you see something, investigate it. We're sending str the strongest signals in this area, minus a couple cell towers and a couple other things that are real. Um, but if you find something that's really interesting, 
you're going to probably have a good chance to look into it. But don't dwell on the problem. If you have a question, ask us. Um, ask questions, learn, have fun, and then check Twitter regularly. Again, Twitter handle, at WCTF underscore US. That's got everything that we tweet on a regular basis. Thanks to our blonde-haired buddy over there, Mark. Say hi, Mark. It's been right. 22 days since he CTF. <laughs> so mobile challenges. We have challenges that have to be accomplished in the room or within the radius of the room or within uh, sight line of, of the RF. We also have mobile challenges, and this year we're doing a lot of them because people seem to enjoy them. This conference, if you haven't figured it out yet, is two hotels, 25,000 bodies of water walking around, and we're hiding RF signals in and on those people. So day one, Fox and Hound. Fox and Hound's one of the oldest running contests at DEF CON. We will give out the ESSID and MAC address at 11.30 on Friday, 10.30 on Saturday, and 9 o'clock on Sunday via Twitter. You need to find the fox. And what the fox is is a person carrying a, a beacon, a, a radio, or something on them that you need to track down and find. When you find it, you go up and say, excuse me, notice I didn't touch him. Excuse me, are you the fox? Only on Saturdays. <laughs> If it is the fox, they have to say yes. Well, they will tell you that they're the fox. Well, I have something separate for the SCR fox. Okay. This is, but anyways, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we we've got a lot of these, so yeah, that's why we post these slides. You go up to the fox, you say you're the fox. They're going to say yes. They will hand you something. You bring that thing back to us. It's 750 points per fox. Just getting the foxes could potentially win the conference for you. If you've got people that are getting the foxes and competing in the challenges, you guys are are, are going to do really really well. So that's the first fox. Uh, hide and seek. We take the exact same concept and we hide the device. This is really similar to things that law enforcement, military, CIA, FBI, NSA, EIEIO does, where they have to go find a device that somebody's planted inside of a location. Again, two hotels. Everything that the conference has access to is in play. So uh, we, except the, yes, the space that the conference is running in but not the like, casino like floor, thanks. Map. Yes. If it's in somebody's room, you take a picture of the room. If it's in a conference area, take a picture of the table. The hide and seek, you don't have to bring us the device. You just have to bring a picture that shows that you were where the device is. We'll tell you if you're close enough. Typically, you need to be within a couple meters for it to be accurate. If you're a room or two off and nobody else finds it that day, we'll typically give the closest person, but typically you need to give us the actual room. Um, or booth, or sofa, or lamp, or curtain. I mean, we, we're pretty pretty tricky with these. Um, Bluetooth, Fox and Hound. Rick? Zero. Oh boy. Mr. Chaos? Mr. The Plague. Mr. The Plague? Yeah. <laughs> the slides are so tiny. Where's my clicker? Yeah. Oh, good. I don't have to do it. This wireless. Uh, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we decided that too many people were finding the fox and hound quickly so he said fuck you and we're doing bluetooth low energy and yeah I'm sorry in advance we're going to tweet out some information about how you can track with the unique identifiers and then good freaking luck uh, same rules apply don't be holding a giant ass antenna in the middle of the uh, casino. casino floor that they, they will get cranky and I will instruct all the foxes not to be in those areas. So fox hunt. There will be three difficulties. Easy, medium, and fuck off. Oh, uh, say hard. <laughs> no, no, oh. no. I saved that word. So explain Bluetooth Low Energy real quick. In yeah, so seconds. Bluetooth Low Energy is what most of you probably have on your body right now. Uh, fitness bands, uh, smart watches, things like that. Bluetooth Low Energy is used for the Internet of Shit things, the Internet of Things. Uh, it's, it's IoT garbage, and it's just absolutely everywhere. I did a talk yesterday about a new tool called Blue Hydra. It's open source, and it's in the latest Pensu release. <coughs> Pensu, 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 might help. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you probably want to use a nice tool, especially if you're going for the hard one, because good luck. Uh, yeah, so... Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, I'm not going to give away too much today, but there might be more hints tomorrow, uh, depending on how terribly you all do. So easy, and then a medium, and then a 750 point. This is going to be a lot of fun. 
Bluetooth hide and seek, same general idea. Somewhere it will be hidden. It will be either in the con area or in the hotel area. Yeah, that's two hotels. Have fun. Bluetooth low energy goes how far? Ah, uh, you know, 30 feet. Yeah, it'll be fun for all. But 750 points, and that's not going to go down, so that's definitely worth an awful lot in the capture of the flag. So, good luck. This is, uh, Russ. Here, here, hold this other phallic. Oh, yes. Wow, that is wet. I know. It's actually your Are you nervous or wet. something? Uh, anyways, so uh, I've got a software defined radio fox for everyone to go out and try to look for. The um, uh, It is transmitting at, where is it? Uh, I think I said it was 70 megahertz. 72, 72. megahertz, that's right. It's transmitting at 72 megahertz. Uh, it beeps 10 times and then it plays the song, What Does the Fox Say? <laughs> and it just goes back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> Same spaces as normal are in play. The fox uh, is released every day at about 10 o'clock, uh, depending on whether or not the fox remembers to turn themselves on. Uh, yeah, uh, but they but they they're should be themselves on while they're holding the fox. Stand away. Yeah. You, anyways, so with the SDR fox, instead of asking them, "Are you the fox?" you ask them, "What does the fox say?" And they are expecting that question to be asked of them, and they will give you an answer. And that answer is written on a piece of paper, and that piece of paper is the flag uh, for that answer. Um, Please do me the extra favor of just like bring the kit back up uh, because inside of uh, uh, that whole thing is the, your ability to score. So the, um, uh, the SDR Fox, that's what it's doing. It's, I think uh, it's out in the moment uh, or rather it'll be turned on in a moment. The Fox Woo! has already been released. Yes. So anyways, uh, that's pretty much it uh, as it relates to that. Pay attention to the Twitter account for any last minute updates or issues along those lines. Twitter, 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 yeah. Twitter, Twitter, Hints. Twitter, so, Hints, Twitter, Shitter. <laughs> uh, so the other fun challenge is the duck hunt uh, that I've brought back this year. So the duck hunt, uh, there's a transmitter on the table over there that uh, bur uh, burps out a packet in AFSK every once in a while going quack. And you have to find, I think I got the frequency up there. If not, you have to find it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, on this one you have to go find it. Uh, technically, it's easy to find, but um, once you see that quack, and uh, what you need to do is essentially run this type of command at the bottom on the very most simplest form. If uh, uh, all you got is a Raspberry Pi to transmit with, or anything along those lines, but you need to send a bang, and if it decodes that bang correctly, it's going to burp back an MD5 uh, hash. That hash is your duck. That's what you used to submit for points. Uh, so every hour there's another duck flying and uh, for every hour it's 50 uh, points per duck. If you shoot too many times, in other words, if it can't decode bang uh, correctly every time, I think I have it set to uh, uh, five right now. Uh, so if it can't decode, uh, if you're just banging it, um, <laughs> Phrasing. Use a pump, not a repeater. Yeah. Uh, so the duck will fly away. You will he hear the Nintendo dog laugh at you, and it'll just stop caring for whatever happens for the next five to ten minutes at random on the interval for that. So you just have to wait for the bang again. Uh, the uh, antenna system on it is uh, a little bit mismatched. So think of it as an actual duck hunt. You have to use something very directional or get really, really close, like an actual shotgun and duck hunting. Uh, so that is uh, the uh, duck hunt uh, explained. It's just in this room uh, as opposed to be roaming around the conference area. We attempted to have it roam once. Yeah, that didn't work out too well. <laughs> uh, that was just roaming was too hard. Uh, the, um, and I think that's everything I want to say in regards to that. I do have a write-up on SDR Ninja about more details, technical information on it if you need to practice or want to practice. Uh, or if you don't have specific gear and you want some hints as to how to set something up. So that's where all that is. And back to you. Wow, that was awesome. There's a laser on this. There's a laser on Get right? me this back. All right, so room challenges. Room challenges are things that actually happen in here. They don't have to happen in here. They can happen out in the hallway. They can happen if you can hover outside the windows. Please don't. Then you can get them from there as well. Um, there is a test flag. WCTF00 is a secure network. 
We are tied into the DEF CON network, but we're tied into the wired side of the network. When you're on that, you are through our firewalls. I'm not going to say you're being monitored, but if you're a douche, we see you and we're going to do shit. Um, that being said, passphrase for that is capital G-O-N-E underscore capital R-O-G-U-E. Gone rogue. What that allows you to do is to get on the, on the scoreboard. It's a 10-point flag that's so that you can check your team, make sure that the team has access to the scoreboard. Um, scoreboard instructions are really, really, really simple. We're not doing anything crazy like we've done in the past. Russ did a great average job coding it drunk, and we've got a scoreboard that just you go into and log in and you set up. Mediocre! Um, it does a really good job. So you go in, you say, you log in, you create a team, you submit that flag right there, and with that flag you get the points. You get 10 points. I can tell you, you've seen some of the point values. 10 points isn't a lot. It's truly a test to make sure that you have access, everything works for you, and that your team is registered. Excuse me. Please yes, sir. take pictures of the crowd. In the past, I can honestly tell you, sir, that anyone that's listening, goons have taken phones and thrown them on the floor and stepped on them. I promise I've seen it happen. It's a privacy-ish thing. If you want to take a picture of a crowd, ask the whole crowd, hey, anybody not want their picture taken? People put their heads down. It's just a kind of courtesy of what used to be a hacker con, Move but it's on. now called DEF CON. Anyway, WEP, WCTF01. Again, these are in the air as exactly that. It's a WEP challenge. If you get into this challenge, it's a 50-point challenge, it's a fairly low point challenge, that puts you into the SCADA network. We have a full-functioning wired and wireless SCADA network running here. ICS. I'm sorry, ICS. I will change that. We apologize. It is an ICS, not a DCS or not a SCADA. It is an ICS network. If you don't know the difference in that, punch me and then talk to him. Talk to him. WCTF2 is a little bit harder. It's WEP like Alderaan. Our clues aren't always very specific and you've got to kind of figure them out. If you sniff the air and have a clue of kind of what's going on in Wi-Fi, you're going to understand what this means just by looking at it. But WEP like Alderaan. WEP, like Anakin's legs. So this is a little bit different. WCTF03. Again, we're kind of obscure. We're talking so much. Easy WPA. WCTF04. This one should crack itself. Literally should crack itself. We give you guys the word list. The word list will be posted. It's on our website. You pull that down. You listen for 10 minutes. This will pop up as a handshake. You should be able to get this one pretty quick. This one's a little bit harder. This is WPA at Starbucks. If you've played our contest before, you might have a clue what that means. If you don't, you'll look at it, and you should see the packets and see what that means as well. WPA, leave your deauths at home. Yeah, guys, we're starting to go completely real now. These are legitimate, real, enterprise-level um, uh, challenges now. WPA, like Howie Mandel. You know anything about Howie Mandel? He's kind of weird. There's some very, very specific things he's really weird about. That's the clue here. WCTF09. 350 points for a WPA challenge. It's the most we've ever done for a WPA challenge for really, really good reasons. If you do this professionally and you're doing a pen test, you're going to see a lot of this. This is a really good chance to learn how to fix, break, and or see how they should be implemented. SDR drinking game. This is one of our favorites. My favorites. I don't know if everybody else's favorites, but it's my favorite. If you baseline your system now and get to know the spectrum in the area, the frequency ranges of the game will be in the usable range of the RTL-SDR. So we're keeping this within normal ranges of the $18 uh, radio frequency software-defined radio. We're going to have a reference uh, yep. signal coming up at 900 megahertz. If you've got a, and it's not up yet. No. Yeah. It will be up in a little bit. It'll allow you to baseline and see what the signal's going to look like during the contest. But we're doing this a little different this year. We're not giving you the ranges where the flags are. We're going to tell you it's in the range of an RTL SDR. And you've got to go find it. And you've got to find it, and you raise your hand. When you raise your hand, you're going to see this. This is going to be broadcast in the air on a whole lot of frequencies. Russ has perfected air painting. So he's tagging the air on frequencies with our logo. Logo is going to change every day, and we're going to change it every day because we want to have some fun and we want to do some neat stuff. But that is an actual waterfall off of a hack RF on a Windows computer of that the airspace. Windows. Of a PC, I'm sorry. Jesus. Sorry. I'm sorry. He uses Ubuntu. Pardon me. Yeah, Pentu sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so is your mother.
So this is what you're going to have to find. You're going to have to pick this out of the air. The picture is going to change for the RTL SDR or for the uh, SDR drinking game a little bit because we think it's funny. Um, what happens with this? I'm sorry. So if you find the frequency and you're the one that finds the frequency, you raise your hand. You say, I think I found it. We're going to look at it and say, yep, you found it. We then flip a coin. Heads, you drink. Tails, everybody else in the room drinks. It's fun for all. Uh, SDR shootout. Okie dokie. So uh, I, <laughs> I brought back my radio shock collars from last year. And instead of just one, it's going to be a pair of them. Anyone want a duel? And you want to play a game with me. Uh, so what we're going to do is it's two players. You stand up uh, in the middle, back to back. You got the shock collar strapped onto your thigh. Your or laptops, wherever. or wherever, not your neck. It, no, I'm not going to allow that. But <laughs> the thigh is a good spot. It's nice and meaty, and it's not going to be too terribly awful. Uh, the, the objective is, is that your laptop is 10 paces away from you, and the opponent is 10 uh, paces away from the other side. Uh, before you play, I'll be transmitting on the transmitter so you can capture the signals if you want to do simple replay or anything along those lines. But I'm not going to tell you which signal it is. It's going to beep, it's going to flash, it's going to shock, or it's going to vibrate. Your objective is to shoot your opponent, to get it shocking their leg, or wherever they happen to have it strapped onto. So the, uh, yeah, so the, the objective is to shoot your opponent. So you'll stand back to back and uh, you start from an empty console, no GRC sketches up or anything like that, and you furiously start banging at your machine in order to shoot the other person. And then whoever gets shocked the first uh, is the loser. And then we'll just iterate this until it's no longer fun. What happens if you shock yourself? Uh, <laughs> extra credit, you that, die. <laughs> no, we'll know, because it's painful enough. Uh, but your objective is to still shoot the other person. Yes, sir? Then it hurts. That's why I'm saying put it on your leg <laughs> and not around your neck. Uh, so last year we had a uh, fellow, Tim, come in and rock this challenge when it was different. So this time we're, we're making it a little bit more energetic. Uh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, for, uh, yeah, anyways. So moving right along, um, on the SDR challenges, the thing that I'm doing differently this year as well is that I'm not giving you the frequency ranges to look for for the different types of challenges. But what I am doing is that I'm doing uh, RF painting as an offset uh, to where the actual legit challenge is. So you should be able to see this little uh, humdinger scrolling by, reusing slides, uh, to identify that you're at least close to where it is. And I'm, I don't mean like you're going to be 10 megahertz or 50 megahertz off. It's within a megahertz or so, uh, just off the leading edge of it, so you could actually still capture the legit signal and run with it from there. And also, uh, I'm, I'm uh, not giving you the exact sort of detailed uh, type of hints that I used to before. I'm now grouping them based in categories. And what I mean by that is that uh, for the first, for instance, in this category, your hint is video killed the radio star. And there are five flags that are extrapolated across that thought process. For the second one, spies like us, there's four flags that are running across something in that particular kind of theme or mode of thinking or abstract concept. See, getting inside my head is a very dangerous place. Um, for the next group of uh, uh, SDR flags, if bees couldn't zag, I think that's the clearest one. I think. Yeah, I think that's the uh, the most uh, uh, direct one. So if you uh, can't figure out what that means for a radio uh, sort of thing, start drinking early. Uh, for the next group, it's hammer time. So if you can kind of think about what that might end up meaning for uh, types of radio transmissions, that's what you're going to be looking for. Uh, there's five flags in there. And then also I have a handful of other ones that are just random one-offs. Uh, so for instance, I got a, a, a stack of power bricks that are daisy chained. Uh, I will transmit an on-off signal for one of them. You need to extrapolate what the values are for the remainder. Your objective is to turn them all on. Uh, there's some serious points for doing that. Um, and 
Sorry, that should have said. That's okay. Your turn to come up. Woo! Yay. We we really want to thank Says this ACS, fine right? gentleman for uh, donating time and energy with us. Ah, oh, there we go. So, um, I'm a ICS SCADA guy. I'm not actually. I'm here to actually learn all this wireless stuff. So, talk to me about ICS SCADA. Talk to these guys about the wireless stuff. So. And, and how much the shot collar hurts. Yeah. <laughs> that I don't have experience with. So. Um, so the type of system we have here is actually uh, the type of system you'd find in a manufacturing plant. So this is going to be uh, automotive or uh, airline or um, uh, like uh, semiconductor manufacturing. Uh, it's not going to be your typical SCADA system. So this is going to be running high-speed, real-time protocols over it. Um, so uh, the only thing that you will be seeing typically on uh, when you get through that web is the is one of the devices. You've got to find the other devices that are in the network. So uh, there's a switch in there. What's the switch's IP? Uh, what's the PLC's IP? Um, again, these don't show up in the traffic that you're going to see. You're going to have to find them in the network. Um, the switch has a password. Uh, again, don't go in there and uh, first thing I will say, please don't intentionally change things in there. The, all the stuff in there is very easily hackable, so I would ask you not to screw with other people by changing the program and the PLC and changing the passwords. I would request that you do that. If you do, I will shut it off, reprogram it, and turn it back on, but I would rather not take the time to do that. Uh, so the find the switch PLC. Uh, or the switch password, find the I.O. blocks password. So there's a 24 volt I.O. signals uh, in there. Find the password in that. Um, there's a file hidden in the I.O. Uh, system. Find the, uh, find the file and then uh, bring the, the flag is actually the, uh, uh, the tag that's in there. Um, so then, then you get into the actual industrial protocol stuff. So there is a byte pattern that you will find when you hit the buttons, uh, hidden in, or it's not hidden, but it's in the actual data field for the I/O block. Uh, you need to bring the data pattern, the byte pattern for all, all the button pushes to these guys. <laughs> these clowns. Welcome to the talk. Yep. <laughs> So each uh, each button push will be 50 points. So button. Um, okay. So the first one is what's the button? What's the uh, what's the button push is, or what's the signal? <laughs> what's the signal by itself? Uh, and then what are each of the buttons? Uh, and then there uh, the PLC will actually send a command to the I/O block. You have to find what the uh, data value is to start with, and then each of the uh, button push, uh, each of the light commands coming out of that. Um, there is, uh, you can dump the program from the PLC to a USB drive, yes, and there is a, uh, there's a data file in there that you'll need to bring the SHA-1 hash to, these guys. Mm -hmm. And then the final is, nope, nope. that's not you. Oh. OK, there is one, um, oh. the last random yeah. flag in there uh, that they don't have a points assigned to. It's uh, can you, without reprogramming the PLC, can you make the lights do something different than they're, than they're normally commanded to do? Basically, can you run a man-in-the-middle attack against oh, the PLC so, and the I.O. block? And that's, these guys are going to figure out. that. Yeah. yeah. And you have to prove that you did not reprogram the PLC. So you run your attack, you show them, then you turn your attack off and show them that it works properly again. Huh, that sounds really specific, like an attack that may or may not have ever happened in a ICS network. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. or something. Do we have to spin it backwards? No, no. <laughs> oh. All right, so SCADA, I know, isn't exactly 100% ICS. Uh, Sorry, I'm reading SCADA. ICS isn't exactly wireless. The problem and the, the benefit of this, and the reason we really wanted this in this year, there are so many networks that are ICS, DCS, and SCADA that have a wireless component connecting, attaching, a part of. 
nobody should be fucking with an ICS, DCS, or SCADA system that you happen to find over a wireless network. Bad things can happen really, really fast, and you can get thrown in jail for a really long time. But here, have fun. That's what it's here for. If you had curiosity about what SCADA looks like, if you wanted to see what a network looks like, first of all, you got to crack WEP, which... I'm going to start making you drink every time you screw okay, up. Okay, Gabe. Sorry. Yes, that's a good point. Um, if you want to see what an ICS network actually looks like and you want to really mess with something fun, <laughs> enjoy, have fun, play with it, do what the hell you can with it. There aren't many opportunities in this world to play with a true ICS network in line, connected to what? Uh, said say ICS. It. Say it. <laughs> The web challenge for this one, we want you guys to crack the web first. And cracking web is something that if you're doing anything with wireless, you should have done 300 or 400 times in the past because it's the hardest programmatically to crack. It's the easiest to fall down, but it's the hardest to crack. It's five terminals. It's multiple commands. It's making sure you get in the right place at the right time. And anyone that sits at that man's table that's sitting down right now, they have a 20-point handicap. Because Kryptos man? is my handicap. What, what man? Oh, the, the man bun over there. The girl with the bun? Yes. <laughs> Which the, bathroom the do you the use in North Carolina? Carolina? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Too soon? Sorry, no, sorry. All right, final surprise. So 13 years ago, we already talked about this. Surprise! We are doing a wireless war drive this year to bring back what we did 13 years ago. This is the kind of thing that literally anyone can do. There is no necessary equipment for it other than a system that can capture... BSSIDs in the air. Oh, shit. Fuck. You could use Draghorn's... Uh, yeah, he's got a tool. Uh, uh, Netstumbler. Netstumbler, yeah. right. Use Draghorn's tool, Netstumbler. We're totally joking. You really should tell him that if you ever see him. Draghorn loves to be told how he wrote Netstumbler. But that being said... <laughs> <laughs> things not to do at DEF CON. But no, the, for real, the... The wireless war drive, war walk, war anything. Get creative, have fun. Literally, you need a laptop with a card that can receive and the ability to capture some files. We are requesting, telling, saying, and reminding you that we are in District 9, thanks, Cal or Circuit 9, thank you, California. No, key, no PCAPs will be accepted. And the reason no PCAPs will be accepted is you guys can't do collection. And even though you may or may not be able to do it on your own in Clark County, Nevada, because of California, thanks Google, you can't do that anymore. So we're taking a dot .NEX XML, uh, .netxml, which Aerodump and Kismet both output natively. In order to submit, by 929 on Sunday, you need to submit in a .xz tarball to wirelessvillage and ctf at gmail.com. 0.065 points per unique uh, BSSID validated by us. Now, that being said, we're doing really low point values because we were calculating out 5, 10, 15,000 BSSIDs worth of points. And that doesn't put you as a winner of the conference alone, but it gets you pretty close. So literally, the wireless war drive is that important because finding BSSIDs and understanding how this stuff works is how we all got started. And if you guys are new to this, it's a really fun thing to do if you've never done it. 0.13 points per unique BSSID if you've got it tagged with a GPS. So if you've got a GPS running, you actually get double the points per BSSID. We've been sending out some tweets over the last couple weeks about bringing a GPS with you. There's a good reason for it. It needs to be validated by us, though. We know most, if not all, of the tricks because we've done most or all of the tricks in different war drives over the years. Render man back there, please raise your hand, has probably written the book on tricks that you can do in a wireless war drive to try and win. That being said, we have seen a lot of these problems, Actually, and we did write that book. There I, was a I, book by yeah, <laughs> not probably. <laughs> I was giving him credit. We reserve the right to refuse any submission we deem to be fake or otherwise not genuine, because we want this to be a real contest. We want you guys to actually walk around. Yes, you can programmatically generate a five hundred thousand BSSID list. You can play Pokemon Go while Psh, doing the Do all you want. 
Whatever floats your boat. I hope you don't use those GPS coordinates, though, because I've heard that they're being messed with. Well, as long as it's between consenting adults, I don't care. <laughs> All right, so that's the final stage this year. Again, this slide deck will be up on our site. This information will be available, and we'll be tweeting it out on a pretty regular basis. .xz Tarball, uh, Wireless Village and CTF at gmail.com by 929 on Sunday the 7th. Final word. This Capture the Flag we build for you guys. We do it every year. We've been doing it for a really long time. But we play, too, while you guys are playing. This is fun for us. We enjoy this. And there are no rules beyond the few that we told you about not getting you arrested. So if we see fuckery going on, we're going to fuck back. If we don't see any fuckery going on, we're going to inject some because, hey, that's what we do. This is like a real live pen test on a hundred different systems. You're going to get sysadmins that knock wireless down. You're going to get sysadmins that run tools that track, detect, and find things. There's incident responders that find things if you're really messing with the hardware. We're going to play as well as you guys are. Please don't get arrested. Please leave the casino alone. This is for your own good. Those rooms in the basement do truly exist, and they take people there. Render, you've been there a couple times, haven't you? Okay. <laughs> if you have any questions, tweet us, go to the website, ask us, uh, sdr.ninja as well. Have fun. Uh, yes. Just, just to recap the legal slide that we showed at the beginning, <laughs> because it's that important. Connecting to our network is consent. You are allowed to hack each other. You are allowed to hack us. We will hack you. Seriously. This is meant to be a real exercise. Have fun, because we will. One way or the other, we're going to have fun. So please, join, have fun, and play, but maybe take the work laptop and leave it at home? Or don't. Or don't. For the consequences. <laughs> this is DEF CON for yeah, yeah, all intents and purposes. If you join the secure DEF CON network, don't expect what you do to be secure, because it's not. If you join the open DEF CON network, God love you, um, you'll be on like 17 different boards across DEF CON that track all that stuff. If you're not using a VPN, stuff's going to happen. If you have a laptop that you're ready to burn or you're ready to play with, or you're a professional at this and you're cool with using yours, go for it. Have fun with this. Do you guys have any questions? Gals have any questions? Cryptos, do you have any questions? Good. Well, that's a first. Hey, really? Anything? <laughs> Got one. Anyone? Got yes. One. Fantastic shit. Like, you know, for, for a beginner or who doesn't know anything what you're talking about, where to begin, what, what tools to use, what gadgets to buy today if there are any weekend to get started in yeah. the process. Okay, so I'm going to pare that down to basically, if you're a noob, what do you do, how do you start, and noob is not a bad term. That's what we're here for. Every one of us was, was a noob at some point. We started this because I can tell you back at the yeah. Alexis Park. You just passed it. Did I? There. Back at the Alexis Park, I was sitting on the floor, writing, trying to use Kismet, trying to figure out a way to turn the damn sound off, if anybody remembers how that <laughs> used to be, and learning this shit. But back then, nobody wanted to help anybody because it was a truly volatile network. Church of Wi-Fi was started by Renderman back there. That started a whole lot of teaching, a whole lot of talking, a whole lot of what does this wireless stuff really do? How can we break it? How can we fix it? How's the world really work? You what? Yes, marriage. he has performed marriages as the Pope of the Church of Wi-Fi. And don't forget it. <laughs> so, so that being said, this isn't new stuff. This has been around for a really long time, and we love playing with it. But nobody ever taught us anything. It was reading the spec. It was reading the IEEE. What we do here, if you're playing and you're playing seriously, we're going to let you play. We're going to answer some well, questions. There are going to be programmatic questions here and there. If you're playing to learn, we're going to sit down with you and help you. We're going to tell you to go sit with somebody at another team if they want you to sit there and sit there and, and side uh, the shoulder surf. Josh in general has allowed five or six people to play with him over the years, and they've learned a ton. This is like your 12th, your 12th CTF or so? If you exponent the two times. No, this is probably fifth or sixth. Okay. It's more than one. He knows what he's doing with this stuff, and it's fun for him. Cryptos over there has been playing quite a bit, and we've been laughing at him over the years. But if you want to know anything about how PyWatt works, there he is. That is PyWatt. What? 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 Um, and some really cool drone stuff, too. So, and, and, and Zigbee stuff. And uh, kind of to distill everything that he said, we have slides and training material on those two websites. Yes. 
So you can start Lots. there. It, and there's a resources tab on both sites that you can go through, and it's like 50 or 60 presentations that we've done over the years. And on my site, the SDR Ninja one, I actually have downloadable exercises that you can work through. So you don't even have to have a transmitter or a receiver. It's just all in software. So. Yep. Any other questions? If you're playing, have fun. If you're interested, hang around. We do a lot of kind of breakout workshops. The ICS stuff is here to play with. Ask, please. I did, because I looked first. Uh, <laughs> the slides say skate. I screwed up. My fault. My bad. Um, Hope you said it. Any other questions? <laughs> Drink. Cyber, 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 cyber. Drink. Anyway, have fun. Enjoy. We're here all week. We love the fact that we filled a room at 9 o'clock on the first day of DEF CON. Thank you, and have fun.